very good evening to you. This is First News. I'm Temba Obe. President Mugabe yesterday publicly accused the former ZMDC boss of massive corruption. Following the official opening of Parliament, President Mugabe addressed a luncheon for parliamentarians, dignitaries and diplomats. During his speech, the president urged the law to take its course on former Zimbabwe Mining Development Corporation Board Chairman Mr. Godwills Masimirembwa for allegedly demanding and receiving a six million US dollar bribe from a Ghanaian firm that sought to invest in diamond mining at the Chiazwa Diamond Fields in Marange. The wrath of the law, President Mugabe said, must take an unimpeded course in the matter as such corruption cannot be tolerated under his watch. I asked Shamisom Tisi, Kimberley Process local focal person, the significance of such public naming and shaming by the president. I think what, what, what uh, is basically happening, uh, for my own reading of the situation, is that um, it, it could be an attempt by uh, uh, the president to uh himself and the political parties and the PF uh, to appear as good in terms of uh, trying to take some action against corruption. So this basically is an attempt to clean themselves by singling out um, the little fish. I would call the little fish uh, people like Maximil and Blah because there is, this is part of a bigger problem. There's so much corruption. Uh, in the system. There's so much corruption uh, in the diamond sector. And this is not the first case, by the way. Um, if you remember the case of uh, Lars Mokorotsi uh, with his Canada uh, in terms of mis misrepresenting uh, sex, um, the case is still ongoing in the court. But it's part of uh, a much bigger problem. But I would also call it uh, it's, it's, it's the the tip of an iceberg, because there, there, there are people out there who are milking the, the, the country. These are people who are spiriting away diamonds. These are people who are spiriting away money and uh, who are getting uh, kickbacks out of um, um, the process of acquisition of um, mineral rights, especially in Maranga. So it's a major problem that we have in the country, which needs to be addressed from uh, a whole uh, wholesale perspective. What is important is to make sure that uh, 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 the Anti-Corruption Commission, for example, is well capacitated, is not threatened, and is able to investigate what the rot in the diamond sector. And this is what we have been calling a civil society organization. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's quite disappointing that you have people like uh, Nassim Rendra, for example. I was with him in Washington when he was uh, representing the government position there in the Kimberley process. And, uh, you see, pretending to be defending the interests of the, of the country. Yet uh, he was actually uh, trying to defend the, his own interests through these corrupt uh, practices. So uh, this is a major problem that we have in the diamond sector. Mr. Abdesi, why, why do you think uh, corruption is on the forefront now, especially in the diamond sector? Is there any connection with uh, what is happening in the EU? not easy to make that quick. Uh, I may not be able to, uh, because I don't have uh, privileged information in terms of the inner workings of the system, but one can actually make that connection. Um, because what, what, what I think uh, is important is, was important for the EU is to see uh, progressive uh, transparency and accountability in the sector, especially the diamond sector. And that is what civil society organizations in Zimbabwe as well have been calling for. So I suspect these are initial steps as well by the president, at least to ensure that at least there is some semblance of action against those individuals uh, who have been fingered in, uh, in, 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 in corrupt uh, activities. The MDC leader, Morgan Swangirai, today announced his shadow cabinet. The shadow cabinet consists of international relations and cooperation, Gordon Moyo, Tourism, Environment and Natural Resources, Tamsanga Matlangu, Finance and Economic Development, Tendai Biti, Defense, Gift Chimanikire, Health and Child Welfare, Ruth Labod, 
basic education, Concilia Chinanzavana, higher education, science and technology, Dr. Matarutse, local government, Cecil Zizai, transport, Elias Mzuri, communications, Nelson Chamisa, mines and mineral development, Abed Niko Bebe, energy and power development, Morgan Komichi, agriculture, land and water development, Sipe Pankomo, justice, legal and parliamentary affairs, Jesse Majome, home affairs, Lillian Timvils, industry and commerce, Tapua Mashakada, labor, employment and social security, Paulina Mpariwa, women's affairs, gender and community development, Lucia Matibenga, youth, sport, art and culture, Solomon Mazzori, Public Works and National Housing, Joel Kabuza. Planning Commission, Jameson Timba, Teresa Makoni, Douglas Monzora, Tongai Matutu, and Elton Mangoma. Award-winning Zimbabwean author, No Violet Bulawayo, officially launched her debut novel at the Bulawayo Art Gallery last night. The book, entitled We Need New Names, talks about a traumatized nation, Zimbabwe. No Violet's novel has already earned international recognition by being shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize for Fiction, awarded each year for the best original full-length novel written in the English language. In Colorado, in the United States, the worst floods in 40 years have forced the evacuation of tens of thousands of people and destroyed thousands of homes. Colorado officials are still struggling to reach the last pockets of known survivors left stranded by the flash floods that killed at least 12 people in the foothills of the Rockies. Meanwhile, emergency officials pressed on with the evacuation of prairie towns downstream from the initial disaster Efforts to reach thousands of residents cut off in communities isolated by washed out roads and bridges were initially hampered as heavy showers persisted with little pause for seven days, grounding rescue aircraft. In the Central African Republic, relative calm has returned after fierce clashes last week between government forces and supporters of ousted leader Francois Pozizé. The fighting left the ground littered with bodies and entire villages burnt in their wake. Many people in Bosangoa, Bozize's home region, which lies about 300 kilometers north of the capital, Bangui, lived in fear of further attacks and were forced to leave their homes. The fighting was the latest incident of instability since the Seleka rebel group seized power in March in the landlocked, mineral-rich former French colony, ousting Bozize and plunging the nation of 4.5 million people into chaos and deepening humanitarian crisis. UN officials and rights groups say both sides may have committed war crimes in the violence. In sport, the draw for the January African Nations Championship was held in Cairo today. Zimbabwe has been drawn in Group B with Burkina Faso, Morocco and Uganda. The group is seen as one of the most challenging in the tournament and will use Athlone Stadium in Cape Town. Zimbabwe is ranked 27 in FIFA Coca-Cola African rankings, while Burkina Faso is ranked 9th, Morocco 16th and Uganda is ranked 19th. We wish our brave warriors all the best in January. And that ends tonight's bulletin. On behalf of the crew, I wish you happy viewing on First TV, your nation, your station.